Good morning, YouTubers. Welcome to Virginia. Welcome to my channel. This is my intro video. In this video, I'm going to cover what I disliked about cruisers or hated about cruisers that prevented me from getting a cruiser when I wanted to get a cruiser. You know, I, w I wanted the comfort associated with the cruiser, the forward controls, the laid back positions, being able to chill, relax. Um, I wanted a better sissy bar passenger seat situation. Uh, my wife at the time, she did not like the sports bike at all. And I could understand why. She wasn't a big fan of motorcycles to begin with. Having a wrap around me, she's five foot four, I'm six foot three. You know, so she could barely see over my shoulders. If there was something in the middle of the road, I had to stop suddenly. Uh, her helmet would slam into my helmet. I wanted something where she could lay back. And then I want to be able to carry stuff. I want to be able to have storage uh, for my photography equipment. So there are reasons I wanted a cruiser. And I looked and looked. But there are so many things I did not like about cruisers in general. And they, can, I, they were showstoppers. Uh, they prevented me from pulling the trigger. So in this video, we're going to cover what those things were and why I think I found the one exception. There's about six or seven things I don't like about cruisers, and if you think about a cruiser, you should consider these things as well. So with that, let's get into it. The first one is pretty subjective. It is definitely subjective, and it is the looks of a cruiser. When I'm talking about a cruiser, I wanted something that's minimalistic looking. I wanted something that's simple, yet tough looking, elegant, steel, chrome. What I don't want, and I didn't want, are the full fairing gold wing type bikes out there with the huge dashboards and I, I, I just think they're I, I think they're ugly with a, with a big large front fairing I can I understand why they do that and I'm not suggesting that they're not practical or functional but that's not what I'm looking for uh, I, I, I don't like that look I don't like the look of the straight pipes that go all the way back beyond the tire there's just something about that I don't like um, some of the blacked out matted parkerized type finishes on some of these bikes I think I see a lot of them on Indians um, some of the, some Harleys, I think the Rebels got to look like that. I know that that looks menacing, but that's kind of like a Mad Max menacing. Um, and maybe it's a generational thing, but it reminds me of people who couldn't afford a real paint jobs, so they just used black primer and blacked everything out. Again, that's very subjective, the, the looks of the bike. The other thing I didn't like about cruisers is the weight. Now, this one's less subjective. Cruisers, depending on how you define them, can be very, very heavy bikes especially if you start including the baggers, the gold wings, street glides, you know, the, the, the big boys that are out there. The, they can weigh anywhere from six to 800 pounds on the average. Some of these weigh, you know, close to half ton. By the time you're done loading your passenger and your bags and gas and whatnot, the, these, the, these things weigh a lot. And again, anybody can handle a big bike when you're driving in a straight line, but it's a pain in the ass when you are driving in traffic, when you're going bumper to bumper, when you're in some kind of weird elevated um, terrain, a mountainous region where you got to back, back things in, move them forward, maneuvering that thing in the garage. You're going to get something that weighs half a ton. Why not just go to a trike? It's more stable. You've got the storage. You can carry the passenger. Um, and good luck if you drop one of those things. It's going to be expensive, and it's going to be hard as hell to pick up. And, and it, it's just not fun for me. That's not what I'm looking for in a cruiser. So the weight was a big one. And that kind of eliminated a lot of the cruisers that are on the market out there. Another thing that prevented me from getting a cruiser are the sound on the bikes. Now, this part is also subjective. I got it. Um, the classical cruiser sound around here in the U.S. is the Harley, right? It's the V-Twin. And there is just something about that sound. Either you love it or you hate it. I am in the I hate it category. My last bike, it, not my last bike, my current bike is a VFR, um, the Honda VFR Interceptor 800. Uh, the one before that was a GPZ 750. It was an inline four, you know, with a Kirker exhaust jet kit, but no baffles. So it had a low rhythmic, you know, sound to it. A thud, you know, that kind of noise. This one here is a little bit higher pitch, but it's also rhythmic. You get into these V-twin sounds, <sighs> I, I just, I don't like them. They sound like Mater uh, from Disney's Cars, if you're familiar with that movie. It just sounds like a broken down jalopy, you know, the bup, 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 It sounds like it's going to stall. I understand it's not. I understand mechanically that's how it was designed. 
I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the, the, the bike that sounds like it's going to misfire and stall every two seconds. I don't like that, the engine that comes along with it, the V-Twin. I don't like the forward back, the shaking, the vibration of those things. I, I, don't, I don't get the fascination with those things. I, it just, it, from an engineering perspective, kind of reminds me of junk. The other thing that concerned me about cruisers was the lean angle on these things. Now, I know they're not designed to corner, but I did want something that was fairly practical. I didn't want to bottom out the bike, you know, going around uh, a roundabout. I'm not a big, I'm not enamored with the idea of floorboards for that very reason. The bikes are already shallow. We don't need to mess with the lean angle by having those floorboards. So I knew that if I did this, at the very least, I'd be looking at pegs, you know, forward control pegs. I would not be getting the floorboards. Another big issue for me was the handling. The handling on cruisers is not fantastic. Now, there's different aspects to handling. Um, what I'm referring to is the ability to actually turn the bike quickly, maneuver the bike quickly, whip the bike quickly. I guess the proper term nowadays is counter steering, but um, I'm so used to being able to do that. And I think it's important from a safety perspective that you're able to quickly maneuver your bike in situations where things might jump out at you. You have to react quickly. If you're on a seven, 800 pound bike with a rake at 30 degrees plus on that thing, it is hard to maneuver that bike. My sports bike has a rake angle, I think, of 25.5. The more shallow it is, the more of a showstopper it is for me. I want something with a little bit steeper of a rake angle. And finding that on cruisers is very, very difficult. So another thing when it comes to engines are the BMWs. Now, BMWs, I don't question their engineering. Their engineer, I mean, they have fantastic engineers. Check. Having said that, I'm not a big fan of the Boxer Twin. You know, sticking out on the side. I don't like the looks. I just do not like the looks of that bike and I do not like the functionality, the placement, having my feet, you know, smashed in there. I'm not going to be able to do much around it. Those things get hot. Now, I, I, yeah, I don't like that either. So that was kind of a showstopper for me. BMW, until they get rid of that, uh, until they have a different design, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pull the trigger on that. Not only that, but if you look at their exhaust now, um, they have, some, it looks like some kind of weird space age exhaust that curves around. I, that, I think, is ugly as sin. That, that looks like it's a, a reject from Jetsons or some kind of space age cartoon. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that look at all. So, and again, the wheelbase and the rake on that thing is just huge, which is, you know, there's advantages to it. If you're on a highway, it keeps you stable. Uh, it it, it keeps you going in a straight line. So from a cruising perspective, I get it. Touring perspective, I get it. Uh, but that's not the kind of bike I'm looking for. I still want the agility of a sports bike in a cruiser. Don't know if I'll ever get that, but that's what I was looking for. Another thing I don't like about cruisers that I didn't realize is the placement of the speedometers, the gauges. Uh, on a lot of these bikes, they're on a tank. I'm like, why would you put it on a tank? Now, maybe it's because you know they're trying to get that minimalistic look, which I'm looking for. But what I don't want to do is have to look down at my tank and take my eyes off the road to see whatever it is that I want to see. Uh, not only that, uh, a lot of these motorcycles evidently don't have basic things that I took for granted, like a fuel gauge. Some of them just have a little light that pops on. I'm not, no, I don't want that. I, I want to know incrementally how I'm doing on gas. Uh, another thing, I want a, a tachometer. Now, a lot of my friends and Harley riders are like, why do you need a tack? Uh, that's a whole different video. But I wanted the gauges to be visible, uh, at least where I could actually see the road using peripheral vision, even if it's not direct. So. Um, that was another criteria I had. I, did, I wanted something that gave me the information that I wanted out of a bike. Not a whole lot, but definitely more than what I saw on most cruisers. Def, I definitely wanted a fuel gauge, definitely wanted a tachometer. Uh, th those were the biggies for me. When it comes to ergonomics, one of the things I did not like about a lot of the cruisers that I saw was the riding position. Um, you know, some of them, they just don't look comfortable at all. And, you know, when the, if, you're, if you're hunched over with your arms out here, yeah, no, I wanted something that was more relaxed, uh, less rigid with your legs bent forward in the forward controls position, which again, I think is what you associate with a cruiser, not the extreme cruisers that are out there. The other thing was, and this is gonna probably piss off a few of the Harley riders out there, I didn't want a Harley. Um, let's ignore the bike itself for a second. The wrapper that comes with Harley. I'm not a big fan of the company. I'm not a big fan of their ethics, how they run things, what their strategy is. Uh, the predatory practices that I'm reading online, which I, I, it seems to be more and more prevalent every day. I didn't want to have to deal with that. Uh, and, and again, I, I'm not, I don't care for the sound, the engine, the looks. It, it's not me. I, again, very subjective. Other people love it. More power to you. If that's what you love and you got what you love, congratulations. I mean, because you ultimately want to be happy on a bike. I'm never going to be happy on a Harley, at least not the way they're making them now. 
So those are all the things I did not like about cruisers. I disliked them so much that I never pulled the trigger. Um, this bike, I think, is the exception to the rule. It is literally the only cruiser that I find acceptable on the market. You know, if Harley had made this bike as much as I despise Harley, I would have bought it. I'd be a Harley rider today, but Harley didn't make this bike, Triumph made this bike. And it's funny, um, when you go online to get reviews about this bike, and there's a lot of reviews out there, the majority, if not, you know, I'd say 99% of them, or well, maybe that's an exaggeration, are by the Brits. Triumph has got a long heritage. Uh, it's a classic to them. It's part of the Bonneville series. Uh, to be honest, I don't see the resemblance. Uh, a lot of the people like this retro look. They call it a retro look. I just think it's a badass look. I, I don't associate it with retro. I just associate it with what a motorcycle should look like. It is a beautiful work of art. I love this thing. It's one of the reasons I actually pulled the trigger on a cruiser. When I saw this thing, I just started doing a deep dive into the Triumph Speedmaster. I love the way this thing looks. It's perfect. It's, it's the right size. Well, it could be maybe a hair bigger, but it's, it's the right size. I like the way the exhaust comes out. It stops before the tires are slightly swept up, or at least it, it gives it that kind of look. It's steel, it's chrome, it's minimalistic, it's classy. It's got so much detail. Um, if I were a wealthier man and I were not a motorcycle rider, I might just buy this just to put it on display in the living room. I mean, that's how much, I, that's how beautiful I think this bike is. I know that's subjective, um, but I love this bike. It's, it's just awesome. Um, the other thing is the sound of this thing. It's a parallel twin. Um, the timing is such, well, you know what? I think it might be easier just to let you hear this thing. It has got a low thud. Th th these are stock pipes. I don't even know if I'm going to change them. It just sounds like a well-oiled, badass, tough machine, you know, and it's 1200 cc's from a weight perspective. Again, the average cruiser might be six to 800 pounds. This thing's 580 something, I think wet. Um, and because of the center of gravity being so low, it's actually pretty easy to maneuver. Uh, again, I'll show you in a different video, but I can whip this thing around pretty good. It took me a little, a little bit. As far as the gauges go, I love what Triumph has done here. They have this very, very, very elegant analog looking speedometer over here with the little LED screen in the bottom. Very easy uh, controls to navigate through. Uh, just using your thumb over there, you can toggle through the different things. It's got like, a couple of odometers, but it's got the tachometer in there. That's basically where I leave it. The fuel gauge is there on. You can see it actually deplete. It lets you know how many miles before you have to you know, go to basically get more gas, how many miles you have left before you run out of gas. Uh, it's got fuel efficiency stuff on there. Plus it's got a nice little dial system for all your you know, ABS, high beams, um, your uh, cruise control, traction control. When I was doing my research and reviewing these things, this is paper research. This is before I actually picked up the bike. I was look, trying to look into the lean angles. And I, to be honest, I looked. I couldn't find any specs on the lean angles on this thing. But I figured with the ground clearance compared to most cruisers, that's going to be a wash. If I want to get a cruiser, I'm just going to have to accept that I'm going to be limited in the cornering. There's not much I can do on that. Or I'd figure it out afterwards whether I needed a jack things up, suspension, if I, you know, what my options were, maybe slide the controls a little bit forward, a little bit higher, don't know. Uh, but either way, I decided that that's not gonna be the showstopper, the lean angle aspect of it, because cruisers aren't meant to be a cornering bike. That's what my sports bike's for. Um, as a matter of fact, I will tell you that now that I have uh, gotten this, I am not selling my sports bike. I've just decided, kind of like firearms, the two different purposes, right? It's like having a shotgun or a rifle or a pistol. They're just built for different things. Each one of them has got its functionality. I'm keeping them both for different reasons, for different modes, for different attitudes. As far as the comfort goes, I sat on this thing for 30 seconds and after sitting on it, you know, it just felt right. Uh, it's got these, I think they call them beach bars, California bars, slightly angled back bars, not really what I'm accustomed to. Uh, I thought that would, I thought maybe that would be an issue, but, and I, but I figured worst case scenario, and I still can if I don't like it, worst case scenario I could change the bars, uh, but it felt comfortable. Uh, it felt my back was straight. I wasn't hunched over. I, I mean, I don't know how some people ride like that. There is a funny video uh, by these two Indian guys 
I think it's called the Quint or something. I'll see if I remember to put that in the link below. It is worth watching where they actually compare. You have two guys out there and they're trading back and forth. One's riding a speed map, the Triumph Speedmaster, and the other one's riding a Harley, what the hell was it? A3, I don't remember, some Harley uh, Cruiser. You can see the difference in the comfort level between the Speedmaster and your typical Harley Cruiser. It is hilarious, watch that. Obviously this met the criteria of not being a Harley, um, and not, so I didn't have to deal with those predatory practices. Now I will tell you, I got this at a place here in Virginia called Motorcycles of Dulles. It was that or drive out to Harrisonburg. That's like, a, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours away. I didn't want to deal with that. I wanted kind of a local dealer. I was very pleasantly surprised with these guys. They're nice as hell. Um, they're not snobby. When I walked in there, they were, they, they were going to let me test drive whatever bike in the showroom. I mean, these guys are hilarious. You just took the, I mean, they got the keys right there. You just, in the showroom, turn those puppies on and just drive them outside and they let you test ride them. Uh, when I actually went to go test drive the Speedmaster, there was only one. Uh, I'd sat on it. That was the extent of my exposure to the Speedmaster as far as physically getting my hands on it and looking at it. When I went to go test ride it, uh, there's another guy who just bought the bike before I got there. One of the reasons I pulled the trigger on the Speedmaster sooner than later was because it's my understanding, I don't know exactly what's happening out there in Great Britain and uh, Europe, but I guess there's a Euro 5, some kind of new green emission standard, something or other, and Harley didn't make the cut on those bikes, so they're not being allowed or imported out there anymore. So I think from a supply and demand perspective, I was fearful that Triumph Speedmasters, which I think is just so underrated, for the value you get, um, I think they might be harder to come by. And this one, getting it in black, was very hard to come by. Uh, the people at Motorcycle of Dulles, um, pull, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what they did, but I think they had to get it from Texas or ship it over, something to that effect. And they pushed a little bit for the financing because I told them I, I just want to pay cash. I just I don't want to screw around with the financing. And that's how a lot of these dealers make their money is financing. Uh, they pushed a little, slightly, but I'm telling you, it was not a hard sell. And then they did this. They, they, they got me my bike. It was there in like three weeks. Um, so again, I ordered this bike before actually having test ridden this thing. All right, what the hell is that? As long as it's not a bear, we're good. You get a lot of deer around here probably a fox or something. Actually, we, we did get a, a coyote, and these aren't like West Coast, West Coast coyotes. I think they call them koi wolves or something. Uh, they could be like 60, 70, 80 pound wolves, but uh, I got two dogs ready to go in there. That I'm not worried about the wolf. Um, bears, bears suck. Um, anyway, well, this is not a nature video. This is a motorcycle video. So this is not an endorsement video for this bike, even though I love this bike. But I will tell you, at least from a paper perspective, on what it is I did not like about cruisers, what it is that I demanded of a cruiser, I l can say literally, out of all my searching, this is the only cruiser I would ever buy, is this Triumph Speedmaster. It is that good. It addresses all my, well, almost all my issues with cruisers. And I just think it's a beautiful, beautiful, unique work of art. I mean, again, beauty's an eye of the beholder, but damn, from the sound, the engine, the power, again, I'm trying not to get into the review, just getting into the criteria that I had for buying a cruiser. If you want to see how this bike did as far as living up to my expectations, if you're curious about the Triumph Speedmaster and how it does being ridden by a Virginian in this type of environment and the lessons learned, uh, click like, hit subscribe, let me know you're interested. I'll try to produce more videos. And don't worry, I'm not going to be flooding your channel. You'll be lucky if there's a, I produce a video once every couple weeks, once a month. Um, but I got a few interesting little ideas that you might find entertaining. Um, and again, I'm not sponsored by anybody. It's gonna be unbiased. You're gonna get an honest review of this bike, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, probably from a slightly different perspective than most people, the things that uh, I care about might not be the things that you care about. But anyway, again, thank you for watching. Peace out from Virginia.